I don't know if you guys are having an existential crisis over who to pull for after seeing all the Inazuma characters that are coming. I would say I am, but I'm actually just a huge Yoimiya simp, so I'm going to be getting her no matter what. But for free-to-play players and for Dolphins, who only spend a little bit just to make sure they can get most of the characters they want, this patch is a little scary. Not just the one patch, but, you know, subsequent patches. Inazuma in general. Usually I say waifu over meta, but that becomes a problem when MiHoYo drops so many damn good characters, or good-looking characters, characters that we want to collect, right? It's a gacha game on us at one time. Regardless, I did see the I news and I want to compare her to what we know about Yoimiya to see if we can figure out which unit would be better for a particular person or for free to play if you're trying to figure out who to pull for if you want to pull this patch. If you're not interested in either of these characters, quite frankly, I envy you. Anyways, it's hard to say one character is particularly better than the others because it all is dependent on what characters you're running or how you play the game. But anyways, let's talk about what we do know. Keep in mind, this is all based off of what we know now. I can't speak to leaks personally because I am a Genshin content creator, but we can infer a lot of things and based on the wiki which is not allowed to leak things we can come up with a few conclusions. First off let's look at Ayaka. Mihoyo did make a post about her skills a couple days ago. Apologies for being late on that. As you can see her normal attack animation does look pretty dang sick. I love that animation. Her charged attack is really cool just throwing out a bunch of slashes. It doesn't give us any useful information about her numbers but it is a cool animation we can look at. We'll get numbers eventually. It's a five hit combo. Pretty standard. Now her E skill is interesting. It lifts enemies up and applies cryo damage in an AoE. It does look like it hits pretty hard if you compare it to her elemental burst down below the damage that she's doing is much higher granted her burst ticks 18 times so her burst will do more damage over time but in terms of multiplier the multiplier on her e seems to be higher i want to see if there's any interactions we can do with her and Jean because Jean can lift enemies and give them basically feather falling so it'd be cool if we could lift them with feather fall and then use ayaka's e skill to throw them up into the air or something make them take fall damage i don't know i just think it could be potentially pretty cool but yeah that's a neat ability can't really gather too much information from that other than damage. So this next part is interesting. So Aika's dash actually is what applies cryo to her weapon, which means that if we're going to be using Chong Yun with Aika, it's almost redundant, right? Because to apply cryo, you can just dash. You don't need to necessarily use Chong Yun to actually give her cryo 100% of the time because she can do it herself. This is probably going to be the easiest application of any character, especially because it doesn't look like there's a cooldown based on what they're showing us. But I think what's going to be the big takeaway for Aika is actually her elemental burst. So this thing ticks 18 times. Actually, it ticks 20 times. I found that out after but I did this video in one take, so can't really fix it. Aika is constantly doing cryo damage with her burst. It looks like it does stay in one place. So this means that her elemental burst is going to do a lot of damage, and that means that she is probably going to end up being best suited for burst DPS. I'm not saying she can't be a main DPS. I'm sure there's going to be plenty of opportunities for her to shine as a main DPS dealer. However, I can see her being a burst DPS over anything else right now. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about Yoimiya's skills and all that we know about them, and then we'll compare the two at the end of the video and see which ones you should pull in which situation. So based on the videos, alone, we can see that her elemental burst, well, we can't see what her elemental burst does, but if you look at the wiki, which is official and not leak based, you can see that she applies a mark, right? And all characters that we know that apply marks apply it of their own element, and it usually does damage over time. Now, to be honest, most of you have probably already seen the leaks, but with even without leaks, we can imply that she's going to be applying pyro off the field with her Q. Do I think this makes her a pyro support? I think that she could be, but I don't think that's going to be her main goal. I think Yoima is actually going to benefit a lot from being a quick swap DPS. And I will talk about that in a second. First off, the reason I don't think she's going to be primarily focused on being a pyro support is just because Shangling looks like she's going to be able to do it better. I have a hard time finding any reason for a mark to apply more pyro than Shangling's pyro NATO and Guoba. She just is too damn good at applying pyro. However, I could be wrong. This is pure speculation. We could find that Yoimiya's pyro application is better than Shangling's. We'll have to wait and see. But the main selling point of Yoimiya for me is her infusion with her bow. So she has that pyro infusion that she can do kind of similarly to Hu Tao. Now, Mihoyo is not nice to us with cooldowns most of the time, for infusions at least. For infusions, they always have a couple seconds of downtime encouraging us to switch off of a character or to just do something else with those couple seconds. So I'm going to assume, and I, I have no grounds to do this, right? But I'm going to assume that she's not going to be able to have 100% uptime on her pyro arrows. If Yoimiya does not have 100% uptime on her pyro arrows, her kit to me will play like this. She'll be out on the field doing main DPS or maybe 
maybe sub DPS, you know, she's in one of those two slots, right? She's doing damage with Pyro and then she runs out of infusion. You use her Q to mark enemies and apply Pyro over time. And then you switch to your Melter or your Overloader or whoever you're reacting with your secondary DPS. And that's who you're going to be doing damage with. So overall, I think that Yoimiya will end up being a sub DPS similar to Hu Tao, where you're going to have them on the field for a little bit and you're going to swap her out really quick. That doesn't mean again, that, that doesn't mean she can't be a main DPS. I'm just saying that this seems like the most optimal position for her. And I think also with the energy recharge set and then the other set that's coming out that buffs charged attack, normal attacks and plunge attacks by 50%. I think that we're going to see a lot more quick swap teams because that set actually seems really good for Yoimiya, the 50% one, being able to use her E to infuse and then getting your energy to full because you're constantly doing pyro damage or killing enemies and using her Q as you swap off means that the set effect is no longer necessary, right? It means that you use it while she's on the field. As soon as it's up, you just use her Q and you swap to someone else. And then when you bring her back out, she'll have some more energy again, just from the other DPS you had on the field doing damage. So based on how I view these two characters, I'm going to see Ayaka as a very powerful burst DPS. And I'm going to see Yoimiya as a sub DPS who swaps in and out. And that means that they can fill a couple different positions and, you know, a bunch of different teams. They're both going to bring value. Now they won't bring as much value as probably Ball will at the end of Inazuma whenever we get her. Like, don't get it twisted. Obviously the Archons are going to be the strongest poles in the game. Ganyu's probably over here like, am I a joke to you? Anyways, we have had a lot of cryo characters introduced to the game. We have a lot of pyro carries already, I will say, using Yanfei as a DPS, using Klee as a DPS, using Hutu as a DPS, using Diluc as a DPS. We have a lot of pyro carries in the game. But as far as cryo carries, we just got Eula, who is basic. she's a physical carry that does cryo damage. I don't really count her as a cryo carry, but she's a cryo character. Rosaria actually allows us to do a lot of burst damage with her Q. And of course, Ganyu is, you know, the best DPS currently in the game. So what does this mean for us? To me, this means that if you're just pulling for practicality, waifus aside, if you just want the most useful character for your teams, Shangling is a free-to-play character that applies pyro. I would not get Yoimiya for pyro application. Granted, we may see that change. This is all speculation. But if you have Diluc or Hu Tao already built up as your pyro carries, you don't necessarily need Yoimiya. And that would indicate if you are 100% going to for sure pull this patch, you would pull for Ayaka. However, if you already have Ganyu or if you've built Rosaria, Ayaka might not be entirely necessary. Because there are so many free-to-play players who have to make a decision whether or not to be stingy with their pulls, it is really important that you know what you're getting yourself into. Into. Again, I've said this many times already, but this is all speculation, right? It could end up being that Aika is the best main DPS in the game. Maybe she outdoes Ganyu, though not very likely because Ganyu has AoE in her charged attack, which is basically why she's broken if you count that she has the multipliers of an elemental burst. But anyways, the TLDR, in my opinion, is if you already have Ganyu and you don't necessarily need a burst DPS that's Cryo, if you're already using someone like Rosaria, then you don't necessarily need Ayaka. However, again, if you're just pulling for waifus, you're pulling for waifus, you don't even really need to be watching this video. You're just watching it for entertainment value, which is chill. But between these two, if you need a Pyro carry, I would recommend Yoimiya. If you need a Cryo burst DPS, I would recommend Ayaka. And in fact, if you don't have Ganyu at all and you don't like playing bow characters when Ganyu gets a rerun, you should get Ayaka now because she's probably going to be the best cryo DPS we see for a while. That's not Ganyu. You know, if you made it this far in the video and you're wondering why we didn't talk about team compositions, it's mostly because both of these characters are going to use the same supports, right? Like if you want to use Permafreeze Ayaka, then you're just going to use Xingqiu and that's going to be that. If you want to use Melt Ayaka, you're going to use Shangling. And the same thing goes for Yoimiya. You're going to use Xingqiu with Yoimiya like 100%. You might use Fischl with Yoimiya. Fischl with Ayaka would be okay too, though you're not going to be doing much physical damage to so the superconduct is just a little bit of an elemental bonus but essentially both these characters could use the same exact supports in fact both these characters could work extremely well together if you use Ayaka as a main dps and use yoimiya as a pyro support so again just to reiterate what i said earlier if you already have pyro carries and you're just looking for the best fit for you maybe don't pull for yoimiya or if you already have ganyu or you don't like ganyu or bow characters in general you're looking for a crown main dps or someone that does a lot of burst damage like maybe if you don't have mona Ayaka is going to be a good character for you. Anyways, that's about all I got for you guys. I'm so excited to pump out the Inazuma content. You guys have no idea. We have so many ideas. When Inazuma drops, I'm going to be pulling for Ayaka on my free-to-play account and on viewers' accounts. If you want to get involved with that, you can go to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash Braxophone. I will be pulling for Yoimiya on my main account when she goes live, and I've partnered up with Yoimiya mains to make sure I can bring you tons of Yoimiya content and the most accurate and best guides, 100%. Subscribe if you want to see those and like for more Genshin Impact. Leave a comment if you disagree agree or agree with anything in this video or just say how your day's going say something nice anyways i will see you guys later